everyone, I'm Gertie, and today I'm going to show you how to sew the Charm Patterns L'Amour Dress Sarong Skirt from start to finish. So the L'Amour Dress pattern has been part of our Charm Patterns library for a couple years now, and we just updated and expanded it with new design options, including this beautiful tiki-inspired sarong skirt. And if you'd like to see the whole dress made from start to finish, you can see the entire thing on our online course on the Charm School website. So for today, I'm just gonna be going over how to sew the sarong skirt because there are a couple areas that really benefit from seeing it on camera up close and personal. So I will show you how to create the whole facing unit because as you can see, the sarong is faced in a beautiful pop of color there. I'll show you how to construct the skirt itself and then we'll finish it all off all off so that it is ready to sew to your bodice. Okay, so if you're following along in your L'Amour dress booklet, which I hope you are, we are on page 38 for the sarong skirt chapter. Okay, let's get sewing. Okay, I wanna show you the skirt laid out in this nice wide camera angle. Uh, these pieces are really big, so I did wanna start with this wide angle so that you can really see what we're talking about and um, then we'll do the detail shots a bit closer. Okay, so what we have here is all of the skirt pieces sewn together at the side seams. Right here, you have the two skirt back panels with the center back seam. The first thing I did was I sewed the darts, okay? So there are four darts in the center, in the skirt back, and I pressed them towards the center back. On the underskirt panel, which is over here, there are two front darts and they get sewn and pressed toward each other. On the overskirt panel over here, you don't have any stitching or anything, any darts or anything like that to worry about, but you do wanna make sure it's oriented on this side. Uh, before I sewed any seams, I stabilized the center back zipper opening with this inch and a quarter wide strip of fusible interfacing that just goes down to the zipper mark. And then I sewed the center back seam and pressed it open. Next thing we do is sew the two skirt front panels to their respective side seams. So the underskirt panel is sewn to the left side seam. The overskirt panel is sewn to the right side seam, okay? And before I did any of this stitching, I made sure that my seams were finished. If you do have a serger, you'll wanna do that first. So then you don't have to worry about finishing your seams later on. Okay, so that is your entire skirt unit. And later on, it's gonna get folded in like this. And this big extension will become our sarong drape over here. But for now, let's put this aside. And I wanna show you the skirt facing unit. And let's look at it from the inside or the wrong side. I interface these pieces first, so that's why you're seeing it look white from the inside. It is green on the outside. So again, another nice big awkward piece. Uh, this one is a big U shape again, and this is the back hem facing. So it's just a straight line, just like the skirt back, sewn at the side seams to the over skirt facing over here, which ha also has this drape extension like the skirt itself did. And then on this side, you have the underskirt facing, and that is just a little curved section right there. Okay, so I finished the upper edge of all of these pieces on my serger. So all the way on that inner side of the U, I surged. So again, I don't have to do any seam finishing later. And I sewed them together at the side seams of the skirt. So now I have one big U shape. Okay, and there are a couple important marks I wanna point out on these pieces. You should have two circles on the drape extension here. This is uh, telling you you're gonna gather between those two marks, okay? And then on the underskirt facing, you have one circle mark plus a notch right here, which is gonna be a really important piece of information later. So just make sure you have that marked. Okay, next thing we're gonna show you, we're gonna come a little bit closer and we'll show you how to sew the facing to the skirt, starting with this upper edge of the sarong extension, which becomes a facing. So I'm gonna talk about that next. We're on step six of the sarong skirt section. 
And what we're gonna do is sew the upper edge of the drape extension here. And what's gonna happen is that this, see, you might've noticed on your pattern there was a fold line. I just gave myself little notches here so that I know where that's gonna fold over. This is going to become a sort of self-facing for the upper edge of the sarong skirt, for that ruffle, so that you don't see the, um, the contrast at the top of the ruffle. You only see it peek out below. So what we're gonna do, and it, this is all gonna feel a little counterintuitive, but I promise you it's right. You're gonna take your sarong skirt facing and you're gonna put it right sides together along that upper edge. Don't worry about if it matches anywhere else yet because it won't. So you're just matching that upper edge and it's also gonna look like the pieces don't match, but they do match along the 5 eighths of an inch seam line, okay? And that's the important thing here. You wanna make sure that it matches along that side at five, about 5 eighths of an inch because that's where the seam line is. And on this side, there is like a little corner here, but that doesn't matter because the seam line is right here and it does match there. So you're gonna pin along this upper edge. And then I'm gonna go to my machine and you don't have to watch this part, but I will stitch right along here at 5 eighths of an inch. And then I'm gonna press that seam open and I'll show you what happens next. I stitched along that seam at the upper edge and then I pressed it open. So now the next thing that's gonna happen is that we fold it along the fold line on the pattern. And like I said, I just put two little snips on either side so that I knew about where. <laughs> that's Malisha on a chair above the camera. <laughs> All right, anyway, that's where we fold it. Um, and that's why we have those notches there. <laughs> she can't stop giggling now. Okay, so we're gonna fold it right along there. And now you see that this seam is actually turned in slightly, and so this will be a sort of um, self-facing. Now, we are going to pin and stitch the skirt and the facing together, right sides together, starting at that upper edge, all the way down around that entire U-shape. And I'm gonna bring the other side over here, my big awkward piece. When you get to this side, where you're sewing the underskirt, oh my gosh, <laughs> this piece. Let me just show you this side, okay? When you're sewing all the way around in this big U shape and you get to the circle right here, don't finish it, okay? This is the upper edge of the underskirt over here. You're gonna back stitch here and you're gonna stop stitching because you want these two pieces to not be stitched together, the skirt and the facing over here, okay? So I'm gonna stitch all the way around. I've stitched all the way around the lower edge of the skirt. And if you wanna see an illustration of this, cause like I said, these pieces are really huge. It's hard to, um, to get a sense of the scale of it. Um, do check out the illustration on step number seven in the instructions. And so I've sewn all the way around and now I'm gonna show you um, some of the steps that you need to do to get this facing to fold to the inside of the skirt nice and cleanly. First thing you wanna do is trim across that corner right there just to remove any extra bulk in that corner because this does get turned right side out and creates a, um, you want to create a nice neat corner. Next thing we're gonna do is grade the seam allowances and grading means that you cut one seam allowance shorter than the other so that when you turn the face into the inside you don't see a ridge along the edge of the garment. So almost always you trim the facing so that it is shorter than the garment, and that's true in this case too. So I'm just gonna show you a little portion of the grading here. You're gonna start by doing this, you're gonna do it all the way around. You're going to trim the facing seam allowance down to about an eighth of an inch or a little over an eighth of an inch. And then you're gonna trim the seam allowance of the skirt itself so it's about an eighth of an inch taller than that. So you have two seam allowances, one shorter and one's a little bit longer, okay? After you've graded all the way around, the next thing you need to do is notch into your seam allowances around any curves. And there are some pretty dramatic curves on the uh, lower front edge of the skirt. So, af and just keep in mind, this is after you've done the grading. I haven't done my grading down here yet, but I do wanna show you what notching is gonna look like you are going to do make some notches with the point of your scissors like that, okay? 
I see students doing this sometimes to make their notches and it really scares me, so please don't do that. You don't wanna cut it through your stitching. So you're going to make those notches about half an inch away from each other around the curves, okay? All right, so you're gonna do that about every half inch, just around the curvy parts. And then the other thing I wanted to show you on this facing is remember that circle mark that I talked about being really important over here and that you shouldn't stitch above it? So I did leave it open over here and you know what I'll do sometimes is that I will put two pins on top of each other to remind myself to stop stitching because it can be really hard to remember once you're on a roll stitching a long seam like this. So I do want to tell you that after you're done grading here, you're going to want to clip all the way in as close as you can to that stitching, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna finish my grading and my notching, and then we're going to go under stitch the facing, which means that we are going to stitch right over here, securing the seam allowances on this side so that the facing rolls nicely to the inside. So next thing we're gonna do is go to the machine. This is the upper edge of that um, self-facing again. So I'm going to turn this right side out, little corner here, and then we're gonna need to get in here to understitch on the facing. So this is really the most awkward part of understitching this design because you, um, you can't get all the way up into the corner, but you can try to get as close as possible. So I'm gonna make sure that my seam allowances are flipped underneath the facing. I'm sorry, I'm sure this is a little awkward to look at, a little awkward to do too. So I'm just making sure that my seam allowances are turned underneath the facing, right? Because when we understitch, we want to catch them in our stitching. I'm trying to just maneuver them at the top here. Okay, so I'm gonna go as far up as I can there. Again, make sure, and you kind of have to do this with your, your hand here, make sure that your seam allowances are flipped underneath the facing itself. And mine, of course, are not cooperating right now. So let me just kind of re-maneuver here. And you really need to, you know, if yours aren't doing what you want them to, just kind of make it bend your will here. There we go, now I'm happy because I have the seam allowances underneath the facing, okay? So I'm gonna start stitching as far up in that corner as I can. I'm gonna back stitch. Okay. And I'm stitching kind of between an eighth of an inch and um, a sixteenth of an inch, just as close as possible to that seam without being right on top of it. Making sure, and that's what I do when I'm like kind of, you see me moving my fingers underneath the garment. I'm making sure that my seam allowances are on this side so that they're flipped underneath that way rather than flipped out towards the skirt. So as I'm stitching, what I like to do as I'm understitching, I like to hold the garment open like this so I have a nice taut surface. And you're gonna go all the way around. And again, you wanna keep making sure that the seam allowances are where they're supposed to be. And that's the thing about understitching. You just have to keep checking that everything's situated possible, um, correctly. <laughs> so I don't press before I understitch, and I'll talk a little bit more about why um, when we get to the next shot here. And it's mostly because I like to use the understitching as a tool for pressing, okay? You don't wanna press first because the understitching is what helps you roll the seam line right out to the edge and gives you a clean press. So that's why I always understitch and then press. Okay, so now I'm around that little bottom curve. And um, just to give you a shot of what I've done there, that's my understitching. And that's going to help the facing roll to the inside. And when I press, I'm gonna roll that seam line out like that. Okay, and it's gonna give us a really clean, nice finish on the outside and help you from seeing the facing um, pop out where it's not supposed to be popping out. Okay, so I'm gonna finish understitching and then I'm gonna press the stitching, I'm sorry, I'm gonna press the facing to the inside of the garment, rolling that seam line towards the outer edge. 
I've pressed my facings to the inside and rolled out using my understitching, rolled that seam line out to the edge so we have a nice clean finish there. I did want to show you how on the underskirt side where that circle is where we clip to, you're going to press them wrong sides together like this and then with the raw edges aligned and then baste those together, okay, from there to there. All right, now let's look at our drape on the overskirt side. I've done a couple things to prepare for these next steps, which you should do now too. And the first is to stitch along the V, that reinforcement stitching right there. So you're gonna do some stitching from there, you're gonna pivot at that point and then finish your stitching. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is slash, or just cut really, to the point, to the pivot point, like that, okay? And this opening, <laughs> that was a little messy <laughs> slash right there, but you get the idea. <laughs> I have to do it upside down, okay? All right, so the idea is this becomes almost like a dart, but we have to, <laughs> we have to gather the other side of it, this extension becomes gathered and stitched like a dart here, okay? So I have gone and I have done my gathering stitches along this side, right? This facing is pressed in. I've done my gathering stitches between those two circles through both layers. So now this is treated as one here. And I'm going to pull my gathering stitches up. There's one at half an inch and one at a quarter inch seam allowance. And you're going to pull up your gathering stitches like so, and they need to be really packed in there. So just hang on to those bobbin threads and pull. Okay, I've pulled up my gathering stitches and I've pinned it to the other side, the flat side of that dart. It's not really a dart, but we're calling it that because it acts as one. Okay, so you have your gathered side, then your flat side. You wanna make sure this is the upper edge of your sarong extension, that folded back facing. So you wanna make sure that that ends five eighths of an inch below the flat side of the dart, okay? Because this is the raw edge of your waistline. This is the seam line down here. So that is placed, there is a circle there, by the way. That is placed at that circle. Now we're going to, and just to let you know, these are very tightly gathered in here. So you really just pack those gathers in, pull them a little tighter, and just make sure that they all fit. Okay, and then once they're nice and flat, and yeah, they are going to be pretty bulky here because we do want to get a nice, roughly extension here for that sarong drape look. Now we're going to stitch at 5 eighths of an inch along here, and then you're gonna follow your reinforcement stitching down here to finish this off like a dart. Leave long tails and then tie them off, and then you're gonna press the dart upwards towards the waistline, okay? So I'm gonna go do those steps, and then we'll come up back and uh, finish off this skirt. I have sewn that dart with the gathers on it, and so finished it off and tied off my um, threads there and then press the whole thing up and by that I mean towards center front right this is your center front notch so I press the whole thing up and now you can see we have this nice self facing here and if you turn it to the right side you can see how beautifully finished that big ruffle is okay so let's take a look at the next step to finish this skirt um, the, I have to tell you that this step is part of the reason I wanted to create a video for this skirt because it's very hard to explain in instructions but very simple once you see it okay so we're looking at the inside of the back of the skirt we're gonna fold the skirt together just like you would wear it right so the underskirt gets folded over first now remember this seam allowance where you left this open above that circle this gets matched to the seam allowance of the side seam here. All right, so you're gonna start at the top and you're just gonna place it right on top, matching the edges of the seam allowance, like so. And you're gonna pin along here, isolating that seam allowance. And the next thing you're gonna do is go over to your machine and stitch those layers together right next to your line of stitching on the side seam. And that will secure the underskirt in place and it also creates this really beautiful finished inside, okay? So from the inside of the skirt, it'll look nice and finished and that raw seam allowance is between the layers. Okay, so after you've done that, the final thing to do 
is to fold over the overskirt, match your center front notches, and then this top of the ruffle matches your circle mark on the skirt here, on the waistline. And then you are going to baste this together so that all the layers are as one. And then you have a finished skirt that you can sew to your bodice. Now, one final thing to think about is securing the facing at the bottom. This does create a nice finish at the bottom, but it's still sort of flopping loose down here. I've pinned it in place at the side seams and the center back seam. So one thing you can do is go and stitch in the ditch at the side seams here. You can even stitch in the ditch at the center back, even though there's no seam on the facing, but there is one on the skirt. So stitch in the ditch there. And then you may notice that even though the facings are secure at the top, they might be um, coming loose here a bit when you're wearing it. So if that bothers you, what I did on the samples was I just did a line of catch stitching along the curve here. And just when you're catch stitching, just grab the tiniest little bit, the tiniest little thread of the outer skirt so that you don't see that stitching from the right side. Okay, so there you have it. It's your finished sarong skirt. And you just move on to the next step in the L'Amour dress instructions to sew it to your bodice. Okay, here I am wearing my finished dress. And as you can see, I have this beautifully finished face sarong with that beautiful green linen on the inside. And this version I've made with the bodice sash option and the gathered shoulder straps. So I hope you all have enjoyed sewing along on our sarong skirt tutorial for the L'Amour dress. If you still need to get the pattern, you can get it on the Charm Patterns website. See you soon.